I'm Larry, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. <laughs> Only after tomorrow, I'll be just Larry. Why, why is that? I'm proud to announce that after many years of pinching my pennies, I can now afford to go on the road for my dream vacation, Florida. For sun and fun? No, miniature golf. <laughs> it's the perfect time to go. It's the off season and the box cars ain't as full. You might even be able to swing a private car. Well, I'll be gone eight or nine days, depending on how many free games I win. So while I'm gone, I need someone to look after Daryl. Well, why, why don't you take him with you? Well, we were all planning to go together. Whereas I was thrifty, though, they blew all their money on ball bearings. <laughs> Aren't, aren't they old enough to, to take care of themselves? I think so, but Daryl don't. Frankly, if we lived in a more rural area, it might be okay. <laughs> anyway, you're my first choice to stay with Daryl. Although Miss Stephanie won by the vote. <laughs> but guys, I, I have a big speech to rewrite, and I, I really don't think I could give them any quality time. Thank you, George. I don't know how you managed to keep a cool head during such a crisis. No problem. <laughs> Hi, Miss Stephanie. Hi, guys. Miss Stephanie, I hate to impose, but I'm going to be going away and I need someone to look after Daryl. Oh, well, then I suggest you ask anyone but me. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Glad I could help. Uh, Larry, I'd be glad to stay with Daryl. Really? What do you think? Well, it's all right with Daryl. <laughs> but before I go blindly handing over the reins of authority, I'd like to be sure in my own mind that you're the right man for the job. Hypothetically speaking, what would you do if Daryl catches on fire? <laughs> Throw water on him. The proper answer is put him under a cow and start milking like crazy. <laughs> Although your answer sounds like it does have a shot. Okay, you're hired. Here you go. Don't lose him. Hi, I'm George. <laughs> this is Larry's brother, Daryl. And this is his other brother, Daryl. How are you and the Daryls getting along, George? Oh, great. It's been a lot of fun. I'm doing things I've never done before. Like today, we played Find the Hibernating Animal and Wake It. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning a lot, too. I never knew before how many things a person could eat and still not die. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. Let's add food to that list. Hi. I'm Larry, miniature golfed out. Hi, Larry. How was your vacation? Well, I managed to have a good time, although I was asked to leave several courses for using a wood. <laughs> but I did leave Florida in style, police escort. Come on, guys. We can go down to the lake and... Oh, oh. Hi. Hi, Larry. There are. Uh, let's see. Uh, one, two. Yep, all here. You look a little bloated. You haven't let Daryl near the rain gutter, have you? I have half a mind not to give you the present I brought back from Florida. Well, okay. 
I never could resist those cherubic faces. <laughs> so reminiscent of the Campbell's kids. <laughs> it's something I put together myself, a Skeeter farm. <laughs> now you can watch the fascinating metamorphosis from larva to bloodsucker. You're a good brother, Larry. Oh, and thanks. Come on, Daryl. Let's go play Find the Hibernating Animal and Wake It. <laughs> oh, and doing it a second time in one day would border on the cruel. <laughs> I know. Let's go build a giant nest and see what crawls into it. <laughs> see you, guys. See you, see you later. I'm Larry, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. I, I thought I recognized you guys. We're here with an announcement. We've decided to have a child. <laughs> what? what? It occurred to us that our biological clocks are ticking and we don't have much time left. Uh, that's great, guys. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how are you, uh, how are you planning on, you know, going, going about that? Well, we thought about sticking with tradition and having one with a woman. But so far, we hadn't been able to coax one into holy wedlock, not even the face. <laughs> Seems the only way we've been able to turn a woman's head is by yelling, look out behind you. <laughs> anyway, in our longing to be dads, we've decided to adopt. We hear there's a desperate need for parents. Pro probably not that desperate. <laughs> Guys, I, I don't want to discourage you or anything, but um, I mean, do, do you think maybe a, a kitten might solve your problem? <laughs> I don't think so. Although Daryl here could teach a young feline a thing or two about catching mice. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. I'm sure one look at our sincere, worldly-wise faces, and it's in the bag. Oh, which reminds me, when we go to the adopting agency, we got to remember to bring the sack so we'll have something to carry the baby home in. <laughs> you know, I hope we don't end up competing for the same kid. I mean, I don't think you'd stand much chance, what, with it being three to two. Larry, Daryl, and Daryl? That's us. Now, behave yourself in there, Daryl, and remember, there's only three ways to get a baby. By a woman, by adopting, or by a star in the East. <laughs> Frankly, I think this is our best shot. Hi, I'm Christy Kastetter. Hi. Are you the lady that's going to be delivering our baby? <laughs> well, we'll see. Please have a seat. <laughs> um, I see by your application that you have two businesses, the Minuteman Cafe and anything for a buck. <laughs> That's right. We can get you franchise information if you're interested. Oh, well, not right now. And um, I see that the three of you are single, so I take it that there would be no women in the household. Well, that's probably true. Though you never know, the face could still come through for us. Maybe you should tell me a little bit about why you'd like to have a child. Well, we want to have a little someone to show how to fish, how to play ball, how to spit into the wind and duck. I think I've got enough information. Thank you. We'll let you know. When? We was all prepared to take him home today. I'm afraid that won't be possible, but I have your number and I'll call as soon as we know. 
You know already, don't you? You're not going to give us any baby. For some strange reason, you think we wouldn't make good fathers. But you're wrong. Daryl and I would make perfect pappies. I mean, a part of us is kids ourselves. But enough of us is adults so you could trust us. And I guarantee you he'd be entering a happy home. How many little babies got that going for him from the get-go? Look, I appreciate your feelings, but there are certain things... Please. <laughs> As you can see, we'll beg if we have to. Oh, well... <laughs> Oh, no, it can't be. Guys, does this mean the agency gave you a child? No, it means we just bought out Dutch masters. <laughs> of course we've got a kid. Where, where is it? Outside somewhere. <laughs> Outside somewhere? Oh, I know. Can't wait to be introduced, huh? Okay, we'll go see if we can find the little Dickens. <laughs> Well, they, they seem to be doing a, a great job of parenting so far. <clears throat> it's a boy. Well, what do you think? He's, he's, uh, he's, he's big. Yep, 155 pounds, three ounces. Better hope he never needs burping. His name's Ted. Hi. Hi, Ted. Nice to meet you. I'm Joanna, Hi. and this is my husband, Dick. Hi. Or, or should I say, Gucci, Gucci, Goo. How old are you, Ted? Almost 18. I'll, I'll go with hi. I thought you were going to adopt a baby. Well, Ted was as young as they'd give us. For some reason, they thought the fact that he was legal next month made him the perfect choice for us. And the agency needed a bed, and I thought it'd be nice to finally go somewhere I was really wanted, even if it was just for a month. You'd, you'd think so. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations to all of you. Well, we better get going. We got a bassinet to reinforce. <laughs> Hi, it's the dads With tons of pictures to show you of our new son Here he is watching Daryl make breakfast Here he is covering his ears as Daryl eats breakfast So how's it been being fathers? Just like we dreamed Although there have been a few drawbacks He don't want to have anything to do with all those pampers we stockpile <laughs> They don't ride up like those jockeys, do they, Daryl? <laughs> and Daryl and me had a big argument over whether to name him Larry Jr., Daryl Jr., or Daryl Jr. <laughs> and Ted seems to be resisting any change. Well, you know teenagers. Tell me about it. We've found having a teen in the house can be kind of tough. I mean, the loud music, the constant partying, he don't like it much. <laughs> But you want to know the biggest drawback? He's only ours for three weeks. I mean, how are we supposed to do everything a father's supposed to do in three weeks? Besides, the shorter he stays, the longer we're going to miss him. You know, Larry, things in life are, are gone bef before you know it. You mean like blank paper in Stephen King's house? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and uh, sometimes all you can do is make the most of, of the time you have with someone. And that's what I think you, you should do with Ted. Hmm. Daryl? Daryl thinks you're wise beyond your years. <laughs> well. And Daryl thinks you like the sound of your own voice. <laughs> Either way, we're going for it. We're going to jam-pack 18 years of fatherhood into three weeks. Come on, Daryl. Let's go find Larry Jr. 
Darn, I thought I could slip it back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Ted's run away from home. Here's a picture and description you can use without the consent of Major League Baseball. <laughs> we, uh, we, we don't need this. Oh, he's already on the milk carton? <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's here. Really? Hi, Ted, are you okay? You got that nasty cold. You shouldn't be out. I, I'm okay. Ted, we respect your right to run away, but maybe you could just tell us what we've done wrong so we won't always be wondering. You didn't do anything wrong. Well, we must have done something. No, it... It just isn't fair to you. I mean, I'm only here for a, a month, and you guys have a whole lifetime of caring to give a son. I just couldn't take all that all at once. It's not your fault. You're right. It's his. <laughs> what? Well, weren't you the one that told us to make the most out of the time we had with Ted? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you get some sort of perverted pleasure out of trying to ruin our lives? <laughs> Ted, would you give us another chance if we promise to follow our own instincts? I don't think I'll be needing this. But before we go, there's something I gotta tell you. I know you're not gonna like it much, but I've been accepted at Yale. Ted, that's wonderful. Why, why wouldn't they like that? Because he knows it dashes our hopes of him becoming a drifter. <laughs> I hope you're not too disappointed. Not too much. I mean, Yale is our alma mater. <laughs> ex ex excuse me? Yeah, we janitored there one summer. <laughs> Ted, we know you got to go off on your own like you should, but there's just one thing we got to know. Will we ever see you again? Of course you will. You're my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go home. You know, they grow up so fast. <laughs> I mean, one minute they're just coming into your life and then it just seems like a couple of weeks later they're going off to college. <laughs> Larry, this is only a couple of weeks later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well... Still, it's all I can do to keep from breaking into a chorus of sunrise, sunset. <laughs> Wait, I know. Daryl, what do you say we have another one?